Okay, so the whole idea um, here is to take um, your standard kind of binary raster inputs and create a model. Um, in this situation, we're doing habitat suitability. So we're, we're trying to take a bunch of different inputs. Um, in this case, we're doing proximity to water, elevation, which is kind of a proxy for um, temperature and precipitation, and uh, land cover type. And what we're going to do is say, okay, let's just say we've got a snail, and it does prefer being close to water. So we're going to set up three different classes. We're not going to go straight binary. We're going to make it a little bit more complicated. And we've got a stream layer where we've buffered it to 100 meters to the nearest stream, 200 meters to the nearest stream, and 300 meters to the nearest stream. Now it just so happens that these meters um, also work out as uh, a great classification scheme for our proximity to water input. Um, and so let me just move on. The other metric we're going to use is elevation. Um, the elevation that they these snails really prefer um, is right here. And if I turn on this one, in fact, to show you that we just have started with a regular DEM. These are our higher elevations and our lower elevations. Um, all I did is basically classify that so that this moderate band of elevation here is where they really thrive. This gets too low, it's too warm, it's too wet, this is too high, too dry, too cold. Um, this is kind of their their zone of happiness. But this would be secondary. So I classified these elevations, one being our highly suitable elevation band, two is our kind of second runner-up, and then the three, this is where they just don't do very well. So again, a different order of magnitude, but high, high suitability, moderate, and low. High suitability for proximity to stream, moderate, and low. And then um, the last one was the land cover, um, where we took a bunch of categorical land cover values and um, you know did our literary literature search and figured out that um, kind of the forest and wetlands are, are highly suitable land cover types. Um, agriculture, moderately developed, are our moderately suitable land cover types, and the 30s represent um, the unsuitable, like highly developed, barren land, um, stuff like that. So the same scheme for each of our inputs, highly, moderately, lowly suitable, high, moderate, low, high, moderate, low, but different orders of magnitude. So what's the reason for doing that? If we were to add these together, we're going to get a bunch of um, output cell values. They're going to range, or going to range, assuming that we have, um, you know, the cells exist everywhere. Um, a range of values from 111 would be the lowest that we come up with, up to 333, if that makes sense. So we could have um, a cell that's within 100 meters of a stream, and it's also um, the highly suitable elevation, but the land cover is not suitable. And so that, that cell location would have a value of 131. So this is a way of setting up a really simple model with the ability to decode the results on the back end. Um, maybe we're okay with just two of the three being um, highly suitable and it's okay if the other one's moderate. That, that's going to be okay for our snail and we'd, ma we'd map that as a place that we'd want to protect or that we'd want to go looking for this thing, whatever it is. But maybe it, it just so happens that anything beyond 300 meters away from a stream, a snail simply cannot exist. There is no other water. It can't survive. I mean, that's not true, but um, we might set up our scenario like that just to say, you no, know, the snail is only going to be found in the places where all three of these are highly suitable. Um, anything else isn't going to matter. Or possibly, yes, it'll be found in these two classes, but only if these two are both highly suitable. So does that make sense? This gives us a lot of power for decoding the results. So um, the, the next thing we'd want to do before we add all these together is make sure that the um, resolutions of all three data sets are the same. And if they're not, we're going to want to resample and make sure they're snapped to one another. And we can do the snapping. We can snap the raster in our environments when we do the addition for the raster calculator. But we definitely want to make sure they're all the same cell sizes first. So I'm going to check that. And woohoo! They're all 30 meter, uh, 30 meter, um, 
rasters, so that's good news. So we could go ahead and just try and run the plus tool. Um, I'm going to do that versus the raster calculator. Um, oh, you know what, I'm not, because I think plus only allows you to add two of them together. So let's go ahead and run raster calculator and see how that works. I have issues sometimes with raster calculator in 10.3. Um, sometimes it kicks out an error on me still. All right, so we want the uh, stream MR buff added to snail elevation 3 added to the snail land cover classified. And we're going to call this um, test model 1. Okay, so that's not a very good name for it. I'd be keeping notes um, in a notebook describing to myself exactly what I'm doing. But remember what we want to do here is in our environments, we want to make sure we're snapping. We know that they're all 30 meter, but we want to snap to um, just pick. Oh, not that one. That's, let's pick one of the ones that's actually in our data set. There we go. And that'll make sure that they're all lined up. All right, let's just give it a try and see what happens. All right, so it, it gave us exactly what we expected. Um, we have a range of values from 111 to 333. I'm going to turn off everything so we can only see the results. Um, it did give us a stretched color ramp, which is fine. It just means there's a lot of unique values. If we look in the attribute table, you'll see that we've got our full suite of options here. 111 are the cells in which um, every location is meeting all three criteria. So ideally, these are the absolute prime habitats for our snail. What does 112 mean? Let's go back over here. We've got 100, so that means that we're within 100 meters of a stream. We've got 10, so we know that we have um, highly suitable land cover, but we have a, in the one section, <laughs> uh, we have a two. So that means that our elevation is in our, our kind of moderately suitable elevation. But that's pretty good. Here, what we're dealing with is highly suitable for water, highly suitable for land cover type, but the um, lowest suitability for elevation. Here, we, let's just skip to something totally different. Here, in the 200s, we're talking now we're 200 meters away from the nearest stream. That's what all of these guys are going to be here, all the ones that start with a 2. Um, if it's got a 2 in the 10s, that means that we are in our kind of moderately suitable for land cover type. And if we were to take this guy here, that means that we're in the unsuitable for elevation. So look at how easy that is to decode. We can decide then which ones are going to be um, acceptable for us, or maybe we take these outputs and we run a bunch of correlations then with where we would expect or where we do see snails. Maybe we've got a bunch of um, point locations and now we want to look for um, some kind of overlay between where the snails are actually found and this raster data set which would help us tease apart which things are more important than others. Does that make sense? I think this is a pretty cool tool. We can zoom in here. Um, to look at it more closely. Um, the other thing to look at is um, that we don't have to accept the black to white color ramp. We can plop some unique values on there and just give them and just see if that helps us tease it out a little bit more. Um, zooming to layer. Um, there's some pretty funky stuff going on here, but we can discern some different patterns this way too. Um, it's really hard to make sense of these colors, but at least we can get a sense of overall patterns on the landscape. Um, we could go in and simplify this and only look at the 111s and see where those are. We could maybe take all of the 100s. Let's do that. Let's open the attribute table and select all these guys. And zoom to this layer. So pretty much everything that is kind of the trumping factor, isn't it? There are places that are within 100 meters of a stream that don't qualify because of the land cover type or something like that. Or for some reason it's cutting out there and I'm not really sure why. That doesn't really make sense. Because this is where three streams would be converging. 
technically that should be all of the um, all of the spaces that are within 100 meters of a stream. Anyway, you can do a lot with this. That's the gist of the lab um, idea running these kind of um, classified raster models. If you have questions, let me know.